Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. Today we'll be looking at how to set up and use the new Unity UI toolkit. I made a video a couple of weeks ago showing you how it worked going through a demo project, but a lot of you wanted me to make my own tutorials on how to use it. So I hope you're looking forward to it, let's get started. But first I'd like to thank Admix for sponsoring this video. Admix is a platform designed to help devs monetize their game without interrupting the player's experience by seamlessly placing ads inside the game world. It takes less than one hour to get set up and with no coding required, just drag and drop the ad placements into your game. It's also fully integrated with Unity and Unreal Engine. There's also an online dashboard with plenty of analytics to help you optimize as you go. Check it out by following the link in the description down below. So here we are inside a new project. I've just used the universal render pipeline template, so I've not actually added anything to this and I'm running 2020.2 beta 2. Now I'll be putting a link to this down below and it's a thread on the forums which explains how to get started and they are updating this because right now if you're on a newer version than me because I'm on 2020.2 beta 2 if you're on a newer version apparently there are some problems so please use it on this version or earlier until further notice. The next step is to install this package which is from the package manager so you have to add in this string com.unity.ui into the package manager. So let's head back into Unity. So we'll go window, package manager, and when it lets us, we'll hit the plus button and it'll add us to put in a URL or a link of some kind. So if we hit plus, add from git URL, and we'll paste in com.unity.ui and hit add. Once that's done, you'll see that the UI toolkit is in here. And we need one other thing, which is the UI builder. And that's what allows us to actually do the dragging and dropping and building of the UI. And that's a preview package. So to get preview packages, you have to hit this little cog and go to advanced project settings and enable preview packages. I understand. We can close it. And now if we went to look through the packages in the Unity registry, we can go find it in this huge list. So we're looking for the UI builder. So I'll imagine it's at the bottom. Look at UI, UI builder. Here we go. We can install that. Now that all the package is installed, we can go back to our scene and we want to actually start setting up some UI. So we can right click and we can go to UI Toolkit, which is now here, and we can add a UI document, which will set some stuff up for us. It'll give us this in the scene with some components, the UI document, and it has this panel settings. And these are like our default UI settings. It's actually put it down in the scene in the, in the assets. So it has some default settings we're not really going to mess with. So I'll leave it like that. And then we've got this visual tree asset, which is empty, and that's where we'll actually make our UI. And then this event system to allow for input. And it only adds this if there isn't already one in the scene. And it doesn't have to be on this object. We could make an empty game object, move it onto there, and it's all fine. But this is what allows us to interact with the UI. So now we just need a visual tree asset. So we can go down into our assets, right click, create a new UI toolkit, UI document. And we can just call this something like the testing UI or the tutorial UI or something like that. So I'll say tutorial uh, display. And with that, you can actually drag it in now over here. And we don't have any UI currently to test it with, but let's open it up. And it gives us the UI builder window. And you can go stick this on a second monitor. You can dock it wherever you like, it's up to you. But for now, we will just open this up in the middle and I'll make it full screen. And all we're doing for now is making a simple counter UI with some a label and some text with a button. So what we'll say is, we'll say over here, if we click on the root hierarchy, this is our, you know, where we stick everything, we can press this button at the top right, match game view, and then scroll out. So this is showing us, okay, this is how our UI will look on the screen, it's currently blank. And what we can do is we can drag in a visual element, which is kind of like an empty game object, but it can also have a lot of settings on it. It's nothing special, we can't interact with it, but it's just something to hold some other elements. So what I can do here is I can say, let's make this fill up half the screen. So if we scroll down here, there's loads and loads of settings. We can say we want the size, currently it's auto, so we can say percentage, and we can put in 50 and 50. So now it fills up half the screen width and height. And then let's say position it in the center. So there'll be different ways to do this, but what I want to do is I want to say over here, position, and I'll say, well, if that's 50%, then I want a 25% gap all the way around. So it'll add up to 100. So we'll say 25%, 25%, 25%, 
and 25%. So now it's in the middle with 25% on either side, and then it's 50% width and height. So if we're to make sure that opacity is full, and that we can pick a color here, so we can say pick some kind of dark gray, make sure to hit save so that this asterisk goes away. And if we move this, we can now see we've got our, doc, uh, our element in the UI. And let's stick some text and button onto it. So we can drag in a label as a child, drag in a button, and for now, obviously, they're really small. We can tweak that in a second. Make sure we give the label and button a name. So we'll set the name up here to be counter-label uh, and the button to be counter-button. And now we can set all these elements. So we can say the size of the button, I want the width to be 50%. And if we go back over to the root, this visual element, we can say over here somewhere, the alignment, we want the children to not stretch. It says here we want them to stretch, but let's say to be centered and centered. And now we'll go back to the button and it needs us to redo the width. So we'll say 50%. Whereas the height, I'll just put in an actual value. So we'll select pixels and we'll just pick some pixels. I mean, let's say 50, 50 is fine. And as for the button text, we can scroll down here and we can tweak that to be, let's say that big at 45. Then we can go over to the label. We can go tweak the label size and then the label will scroll up to the top and it has the text here. So we can set that to say count colon zero. And maybe we want some padding between the two. So there's a gap. So let's go down to margin and padding a bottom, and we'll just add on some padding. Sometimes it's a bit glitchy when you're changing stuff, you know, it's in preview. Like I said, this is more teaching you how to use it rather than telling you to use it right now. But yeah, I'm happy with my UI, so make sure to hit Control S, make sure it is all saved. You can see it back over here. If we were to hit play right now, nothing happens. So we need to write some code to make this button change this UI. Let's stop running this and let's close the UI builder and we'll go to our scripts. We'll make a new script called counter. The way I'm gonna be coding this is how they do it in their documentation so it's consistent. So they'll use the on enable, so on enable, to grab the UI elements themselves. And we need to store a label and a button. So we'll say private label, make sure it's from UI elements, and we'll call this the counter label. We wanna store a private button called the counter button then here we actually need to grab it and we can grab it from that UI document. If we look back into Unity, you should remember over here, we've got this UI document and it's this component here we can grab the elements from. So let's say um, get component UI document and it has this thing called the root visual element, which is where you can get all the components from. And we want to store this. So let's say var root visual element equals and then let's grab our label. So to grab the label, we can say counter label equals the root visual element dot, and they have this thing called Q, which is query, and we can query for a label, a label, and we then want to pass in here the name of the label. So we called it the counter dash label. And we can do it with the button too. So we can say the counter button equals a root visual element dot query for a button with the name counter dash button. Then we want some function to be called whenever we click on the button. So let's make a private void increment counter. And for that, we actually need a value. So a private int count. And we'll say down here, we want to increase that number. So count plus plus. And then we also want to update the UI. So the counter label dot text should now equal count colon and then the actual value of count. So that'll update the string. But we need something to say call this when we press the button. So you can over here register some callbacks. We can say for the counter button, whenever it's clicked, register callback, click event. So whenever it receives a click event, we want to call increment counter. And this will actually give us some data. So we need to make a variable for that and they call it EV, which is the event data. And we can say we want that to call uh, increment counter. 
And if we needed data from this, we could say ev dot, and then there's all these different things you can get. But we don't need that, so we'll leave it blank. So now we say, all right, when this starts existing, we want to grab the root visual element, grab the label and the button. And for the button, we want to say when we click it, call this function, which will increase our counter and update the UI. If we head back into Unity and we add on the counter component to this object, let's just make sure that we got the strings right. So counter dash label and counter dash button. So we'll go into the builder. And we'll look over here, it's counter dash label and counter dash button. So that should be good. Let's hit play. And if I now hit the button, we see that it updates the text and it says count colon and then the number that we're on and it works. So yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I know it's a pretty simple introduction into how it works, but I thought it's always good with this kind of thing to do a short and simple video on how to set it up and get going. So now you know how to start from scratch and have this work. You know, feel free to look into the documentation to see how you use sliders and all the other little things, but I'm sure I'll be doing some more videos on all those things soon. If you found this video useful and enjoyed it, then please leave a like and subscribe, it'll help a lot. But apart from that, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons, special thanks to Francisco Lira, Liz Kimber, Alaire, Bedodai, Benjamin Hilder, David McDermott, Dustin Miller, Farouk, Jake Nixon, John Selig, Yoris Letter, Katinkamom, Lewis Ramos, Matt Fryer, Sam Marcus, Malvin, and Rack. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you in the next one, and goodbye.